A new beta phase, two new divisions, a new two new maps, and a new game mode. If you want to find out more, just stay tuned because I'll be posting quite a lot of videos on that. And it is supposed to be a five-player co-op game mode. So that should be pretty awesome there. Anyway, so today we'll be looking at one of these two new divisions. So we have the 26th Infantry of the Soviets and we have the 78th Sturm, the 78th Infantry Mechanized of the Germans. We're going to look at the Soviet deck first and we already pre-made one. So let's quickly dive into that. We call the Panzerbusch for some reason, not quite sure why. Don't judge. So deep breath in we have some really fun units and the first one that I actually want to show you real quick is this the Straf Niki so let's actually start with the infantry first um, and let's just start at phase A so really similar to what we had in um, in our previous deck here some units are very familiar and some minor tweaks to other units have been made in this bit division but to start off we have some Aftermachikis and this is a really motorized division there's really not any vehicle that has like a gun on it apart from maybe some recon units so everything is lightly armored and unarmed so definitely don't try to push up against an armored um, enemy there but yeah we have six medium veterancy after machikis with the ppshs and the grenades we also have some guardias dps with the ptrd anti-tank there um, loads of mosins and this is a 12-man squad so good line infantry really and combined with the after machiki they can do some hefty short range some uh, close quarter combat and also have the longer range engagements here with the Mosin and the machine gun and also some anti-tank capabilities with the PTRD and also with the help of these heat shells here the PTRD pretty good range I actually like to use these on um, like lightly armored vehicles half tracks and such so if you're in a town and there's like an armored convoy of infantry coming up you'll be you'll be wrecking that face two rounds per uh, second as well so pretty good and we have two cards of these to basically buff the front lineup. And to help out with some more anti-infantry capabilities, we have these Saperis here. They have these TNTs, um, TNT on them. They also have the machine guns and the regular loadout with the SVD-40s and the PPSHs there. Pretty decent range actually with uh, for a TNT. That look like that is that is like that's a good that's a good arm right there. That is a good arm right there. So. Yeah, that is basically it for Phase A. And we also have some leader units for Phase A, obviously. They have the Panzerfaust, so that is a really only direct anti-tank, strong anti-tank weapon, apart from the really close range, um, you know, grenades and uh, the DPRDs that we have. In Phase A, something quite similar, but this time we have some uh, Saperis, the PPSH Saperis with four of those, some explosives, some TNT, and also a Panzerfaust. So all-around infantry, but only four-man squads. So definitely keep these like behind your after machikis and saperis. Speaking of after machikis, we also put these in phase B. We got 12 of these on medium veterancy and I don't really recommend going for the highest one. If you have a leader nearby and if you have a commander connected to that leader, these guys will be the best you can get them at. So don't don't bother going for 3 stars. It's not worth the decrease of 4 units. And yeah, so 10 PPSHs and also some heat shells there. Once again, the Guardia DPs, we have 12 of these now, so no need for a second card. Sturm Komrotis, six-man leader units, SVD-40s and a PPSH and some smoke nades, which might be useful. And yeah, the Coup de Gras, the Strafnikis with the giant anti-tank rifle there. They have three machine guns, 13 Mosins and three PPSHs. If you're trying to kill something, this is how to do it. And I do kind of think of these guys as the ones that tried to retreat and then were like killed yeah that, that's good that's gonna be awesome but yeah that is the infantry tab you can also go for some uh flamethrower infantry if you do want to what might be a good kind of deal to go for is if you don't like these four man anti-tank well assault engineers you could remove these and get some of these flamethrower troops and just get some anti-tank in phase a here in the form of these Faustinis, which I might actually do now that I think of it. So let's go ahead and remove these Saperis and get some flamethrower troops in phase B. They are automatically at the highest veterancy, so not much I can do about that. So in the recon tab, something also more fun, some female sniper teams now with a Mosin a thousand meters range, 
and a PPSH there. Exceptional stealth, very good recon, and you get eight of them in phase B. And in phase A, I have some Moto Strelic, or well, I guess you could call them Moto Strelic. I'm just gonna call them uh, Mod Resvetkas, uh, recon units, four man team, pretty basic recon. I wouldn't really recommend attacking anything with it. And you also have some Konaya Resvetkas that you can go for. You only get one in phase A, which is really the main reason I went for them in, um, well, I didn't really go for them since I do like my recon in phase A. You also have some two-man teams here, the Dozers. You get three of these as well. What you could do is go for the lowest veterancy on uh, your recon if you do want the numbers. So you could go for this guy giving you four, but uh, I'd rather have two more men per squad here. And you also have the WLADP here with a machine gun. So that is it for the recon and infantry. And the tanks, not too much, since it is an infantry division you don't really have too many choices but you do have the is1 here beautiful heavy tank it's a leader unit but it has a good armor good gun 85 mil on that that is that is definitely going to wreck some face it's 120 points and i'm calling it out in phase a so um that will hold a one flank that is about it we also have some kv1es here in phase a pretty good tank in general as well 76 mils this five on it it's a hundred mil penetration, not great against um, you know what the Germans can throw at you, but it's it's all around good tank. So I would really recommend just ambushing with these or just trying to engage units at close range, or at least closer range. In the phase B, we have the KV-1S Komrotis, lighter tanks, but um, if you go for phase A, you only get two, and since we already have the KV-1Es here, there's no real need really. So we have some more in phase B to buff up the front line, not to really attack with. And we also have the KV-85 heavy tank in phase B on medium veterancy, and that actually has some really nice values there. And if you do want some heavy T-34Es, you could go for these. They're basically better armor T-34s or extra armor, um, as you can see on the front armor there. The rest is pretty much the same. Um, but yeah. And if you want to adjust this deck, feel free. The code is in the description, so go check it out. All right, so in the support tab, we have our commander on a Dushka. So that is our only fire support that we get with infantry, funny enough. We have some supplies in phase B. We have the OT-34 flame tank with a 160 meters range on that flamethrower, which is pretty good, actually. And also has 76 mil and uh, a machine gun 762. So pretty good, decent tank, good armor as well. And the, the gun is actually pretty nice. We have the M2 combat commander unit in phase B in case this guy dies and in case we really need to secure a really big front line. And we also have the ISU 152. So the other units that we have here is the Ognemet Chikis. Um, they have a flamethrower and some smoke nades. It's only a two man squad, so easy to kill. We have the 50 mil mortars. We have a Maxim machine gun, which has a thousand meters range here. We also have the SG 43 which is an, another 762 with 1200 meters range. And I don't know if that is a seven, it, it looks like a 50 cal if I'm honest here, but I might be wrong. It looks like a 50 cal at least, but it's probably a 762. We have the infantry gun here, 76.2 mil, two kilometers range, decent penetration, not the best, but it'll also be able to uh, wreck some infantry with those HE shells. If you only want to see the stats of the HE shells, you just simply just click on it. And that is also at max range. And the blast is pretty good as well. And what else do we have? And I think that's about it. Yeah, you have some more supplies. The M3A1 here, which you get in phase C. And I personally, I think that's a little bit too late to call in any commanders. And uh, you can get more ISU 52s. So in the anti-tank, to help with our anti-tank capabilities in phase A, we have some Faustinis here, which is a four-man squad with the 120 mil anti-tank rocket launcher or anti-tank heat, whatever you want to call it. We have the machine guns and we have some PPSHs in this unit. You also have the um, PTRS-41 you can go for, which is basically an anti-tank rifle, 14.5 uh, mil, 500 meter range. So pretty good range, decent penetration, but you need to be really close to the enemy. Otherwise you're not gonna like be able to destroy a tank. You will be able to do some damage like maybe detrack it or wound like someone in there, but you're not gonna be able to kill it probably, unless you like hit this, the, the, the back of it or something. 
We also have these 45 mils in phase A, three of these on medium veterancy, good range, decent penetration there. To help them out in phase B, we have the ZIS-3, 76 mil. Um, the range, it doesn't say, okay, two kilometers there. And the HE shells are, it doesn't really say the HE shells. I guess it's, it's also at max range, but uh, it doesn't really say. But uh, yeah, really good penetration, 105 on those, and APCRs have 135. Uh, mill penetration and we also have some tank destroyers SU-85 Really nice penetration values on everything and also has HE shells on that 180 mil that is that is pretty damn good Yeah, medium veterancy put a leader ne near it and also commander connected to that leader and yeah, you got that In the AA tab we have some maxim AA four of these and I'm kind of not building up on this because I try to rely on my planes um, for, you know, anti-air capabilities, and otherwise it just uses so many points, and I kind of spent everything on infantry there. So four of these in phase A, and all the way in phase C, we have some of these ZSUs. And you can also go for some Dushkas, 10, uh, like 10 points, 50 cal AA pieces, really short range though. Or you can go for ZSU M15s in phase B, but you only get one. Two if you go for the lowest veterancy. But yeah, these are pretty sick. They have a 37mm autocannon and two 50 cals. So that should do quite a bit of damage. In the artillery tab, kind of spoiled myself a little bit. So we have some SU-76s in phase B, nothing in phase A. Absolutely nothing in phase A. I could go for these in phase A on the lowest veterancy, giving me three of these. Or I could remove these and get some mortars in phase A, which gives me uh, three of these as well, 120 mil mortars. So the blast is 5,800 on those and 4,000 on these. So that is nine rate of fire. This is 14 rate of fire. So these guys will do more damage um, on infantry, most likely. Yeah, let's actually compare these two and see which one would be better. So the damage on the 120 mils is 6 compared to 5. The suppressive damage is higher. The blast is higher. The range is 6k, which is more than enough. And the rate of fire is much higher as well. And traverse speed is actually better. So the only reason I don't like mortars is they're, they're, they are easy to kill. And they're slow. They're really slow. So if I get these guys in phase A, I get two of them. If I get these guys in phase A, I get three of them. I could also get the 82 mils, which gives me four. But then again, they're infantry units and just, you know, more stuff to micro. But since these do look better, I'm... Yeah, I'm kind of banking towards using mortars in phase A, actually. Let's do that and see how that goes. In the coup de gras here, we have the BM-31-12 Andrushas with the 300 mil HE shells. That is going to be sick. It carries 12 of them. Look at that blast. I've never seen that big of a number in this entire game. 611 suppressive damage, 15 damage in general, 4550 meters range, that which is more than enough. Yeah, that this is this is going to be sick. Three rounds per minute, though. I don't know if that is actually the, the case, if it only fires three per minute, or if that is, you know, including the reload time it takes or something. We also have some big boys here, self-propelled howitzer type of... No, it's not howitzer. Self-propelled artillery, 280 mils. Probably pretty sick. Best use against, you know, to counter RT. Um, but you can also go for something lighter, which is the 203 mil, and you get four of these compared to two of these. I just need to test them out. What you could also do is get one of them in phase B, but yeah. The models probably need to change because the 280 mil, the gun doesn't look different, although the back does. But I don't know if that's it's, if that's there to stay. In the air tab, something really cool and interesting. So we have a recon plane here that is also, could be used as a fighter, I guess, or, or like a heavy fighter. We have the PE-2R with a 50 cal on the nose, a machine gun on the nose, and two... 50 cal turrets, so one there and one there. And there's a good thing and a bad thing about a fast fighter type of recon. One, you will probably occasionally use these to fight enemy fighters, which is not going to do any good because the agility is really low. Second, because it's pretty quick and you move this close to the front line, it'll occasionally cross into the enemy airspace and it might get shot down by like enemy planes or enemy AA. So if you do use these, try to keep them really close, like, well, really far behind, far within your 
line, your territory. Because the enemy will probably scramble planes thinking that this is an actual fighter because it's moving that quick. So just keep that in mind. In phase B, we're calling in some fighters here since we're lacking AA in phase B. So we have two of these Yak 9s with 20 mils and a 50 cal on the nose. We also have some... That is actually the only fighters we can get, only Yak 9s. They're not the best, but um, yeah, we got, we got two of them. And if you want, you can remove something somewhere in this deck and put in some more fighters. So we have the IL-2 Tank Buster now with two 37 mil cannons, auto cannons on the wings. We also have two machine guns on the wings, and we have a 50 cal turret on the back there. And these guys, I've actually tested them out, and they actually do kill tanks really, really easily. And we also have the Yak-9B with cluster bombs, interestingly. And I've tested these guys out as well, and they do actually kill tanks. They actually do. And they also have a 20 mil on the front and a 50 cal on the front as well. I don't know, somewhere. Somewhere hidden. But yeah, really nice looking loadout. You can also go for some Yak-9B fighter bombers. But yeah, when you have bombs on a plane, it reduces the speed and probably reduces the agility as well. We also have the P2 here with rockets that I've actually taken out, uh, taken out to uh, fill up the infantry tab and such. But these guys carry 10 132 mil rockets and uh, plenty of other firepower. You also have the IL-237, which carries some more bombs, four 50 kilogram bombs, and um, yeah, you have more of these kind of bomber units. It does say air recon with this one, but that's probably just a typo. Everything is subject to change. Now the thing with infantry divisions is you have a lot of defensive capabilities, and there's actually some new cool ones here. So we have the barbed wire, we have the maxim bunkers, we have the trenches, but now we can actually ca call in anti-tank bunkers here. And once again, the models are subject to change. So here we have a PTRD here, 14.5 mil, 35 mil penetration, so good for ambush positions. But we also have the, this 40, it says 45 mil here, but 50 mil there. We have a Pac-38 um, with two kilometers range and 100 mil penetration. So that, that, that should actually be really powerful to use. And we only have one of these, sadly. So what you could do is actually remove this guy and put in some more of these bunkers. But I do like to have some really fast firing, light anti-tank um, sprinkled around here as well. But yeah, that was it. That was the 26th Infantry Division of the Soviets. If you want to try it out, check out the code down below and just adjust it to whatever you want to adjust. And um, yeah, that should help you out to have like a, like a kind of like a format um, to play around with. So the next one we're going to check out is the 78th Sturm, but I'll leave that for another video. So if you've enjoyed it, please do let me know, and I'll see you in the next one.